the Jimmy Olsen Radio Network. Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. Barbecue provided by Kenny's Rib Wagon. Catering ribs for your pleasure and serving daily at Plaza Pub, 62nd and Douglas in Des Moines across from Merle Hay Mall. Find Kenny's Rib Wagon on Facebook. Welcome to the Gospel Road. Deuteronomy 7 is what we are going to look at today. What a difference a week makes. Of course, you hear a lot of what a difference a day makes, but uh, yeah, a little chillier this week than last week. And then, of course, we ended up with rain yesterday. It was supposed to rain today. It didn't uh, end up raining, but either way, uh, lawn's still too wet to mow. So am I whining when I say that? I don't know. I had, someone said I was on some soapbox last week. <laughs> whining about life. I think we all do at some point adulting it just gets so overwhelming annoying but this is mother's day so be sure to tell your mom happy mother's day i did in fact it was my mom's birthday yesterday too so also wished her a a happy birthday and then was working on a chair and i failed (laughs) because my dad has a chair that broke and I was trying to put a couple old office chairs that we had together and it just didn't so I have one on order and it should be in so he should have his office chair that he wants tomorrow you gotta love Amazon right so just all those little things that we deal with every day and sometimes we do get very frustrated because of that because we're getting pulled in so many different directions I mean do you feel that I mean I feel it a lot A lot of it, I I will admit, I'm sure I do to myself because I work a couple, three different jobs. So I'm not just, you know, focusing on one job and then going home and dealing with what I have at home. But sometimes you have to have the multiple jobs so you can deal with what you have at home. You know, you get those cards that are dealt to you and how are you going to deal with them? Are you accepting them? Are you going to figure out a way to change them? I'm doing the best I can to change them. It's a lot of work. And we all really realize how much work life can be. And many times, we are not happy with how much work life can be. And we're not sure exactly how to deal with that or what to even do. But then you remember that you just need to keep pushing forward. It's needing to be better. Helping others to be better. Again, remember, being better today than we were yesterday. You know, that's what it is. It's that every day, and that's really where I go with this each week. It's truly trying to help us to be better people, to be better at what we're doing, to want to be better, to be motivated to be better. And sometimes we are our own motivation because we're not going to get that motivation from those around us. It was an interesting conversation I was having with somebody yesterday. And there's things that happen in life, and at times you end up in a position that you might be very much more qualified than the person that is above you. And so I was having a conversation, and they made this comment of, well, when you're in that frustration and you're dealing with these things, well, why don't you just approach them, especially if they're older, and say, hey, how much longer you plan on being around? You know, I'd love for you to be around forever, but, you know, I'd love to take your job. I, and I was shocked. And they even said, they said, well, I did that at my last job to get ahead. I'm like, whoa, so you are a steamroller. You will just do whatever it takes for you to get what you want and does not matter the carnage that you leave in your path. I was appalled. Because to me, that's not the way we should be acting. That's not the way that we should be treating one another. Do I get frustrated because of what I deal with every day? I do, but I do my best. I'll be honest, I looked at my <laughs> my boss was it last week or the week before. I was just so frustrated because everybody coming to me, I'm going, why me? And I looked at him, I said, can I just suck at my job? Why can't I just suck at my job? 
By no means am I saying I am fantastic either. But again, it's just the knowledge. What it is that you know. Remember, common sense cannot be common if you have no clue. If you do not have the knowledge, you can't know what it is that you need to be doing. And then there's those that really go out to find out why. Remember, I've told you, I am a curious. I take things apart to find out why they work. I want to know why. Maybe I should have been an engineer. (laughs) I have no idea. But this is what I do. And in some ways, I could say that. I just don't have the high-dollar degree. You know, I'm a studio engineer. That's our fancy term for a board op in broadcasting. But we learn a lot. And I think I've shared it before is that, you know, I'm always curious and I'm that sponge. I was actually called a sponge because I want to gain that knowledge. And it's interesting that there's others that are not that way, do not think that way. And many times when a person is like that, if they're wanting to gain knowledge or always wanting to learn, all of a sudden you're the brown noser. You're the kiss up. And unfortunately, I'm not a brown noser, not a kiss up because I am terrible at negotiating and terrible at being strategic and terrible at not keeping my mouth shut and just saying, look, you're kind of stupid. You're doing this wrong. What are you even thinking? Yes, I'm not the most corporate person, if you haven't figured that out. But again, I care is my problem. And I'm not wanting things to just be done halfway. You know, again, you should be doing things the best that you can. And not stop until you get there because even when it's better it can still be better yes because things can always grow we can always learn again it's being better being inspired to take that next step being inspired to help others to really want to do something better in their lives i mean how is it that you deal with that it's very interesting the different temperances that people have. Did I use the right word? Oops. I don't know. But our personalities are different. Those that are bulldogs, those that are bulls in china shops, those that are meek, those that care, maybe too much. Because sometimes caring doesn't match the bottom line according to corporate. I try to do better. I do try to be very aware of the spending. Because we need to be responsible. Or we'll be held accountable. Doesn't matter if you're a profit or non-profit. I mean, if you're non-profit, you got to be a good stewardship with that money. That money is being donated to you. It's being given to you. And they're expecting you to treat it with respect and not just throw it away and do whatever it is you feel you want to do with that. It's a lot of responsibility. Life is a lot of responsibility. Okay, I'm sure I'm going to be told about it. I was just on some soapbox again. But, uh, you know, in some ways I kind of am. I'm on that soapbox every week of us to be better. To strive for excellence. Always growing. Always learning. You know, Thomas Jefferson you know, was still going to college when he was older. I mean, what, 70, 75, I think he was still in, in school. Getting another degree or taking another class. If I remember right, I could be wrong, but I I believe I read that somewhere. But I mean, it's true. We always, there's always something out there to learn. There's always something out there to really understand. To be better. to, To understand life. To understand what it is that you're doing. That next step that you're going through. Yes, it is exhausting. Deuteronomy 7, that is what we're 
going to look at today. It says, when the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to take possession of it and clears away many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations more numerous and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you must devote them to complete destruction. You shall not make no covenant with them and show no mercy to them. Wow, maybe that's what that person is. She just shows no mercy. She just conquers and takes. Anyway, (laughs) sorry, that just popped in my head. You shall not intermarry with them, giving your daughters to their sons or taking their daughters for your sons, for they who they would turn away your sons from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord would be kindled against you and he would destroy you quickly. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and chop down their ashram and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a people, holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people that his treasured possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping you, keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generation and repays to their face those who hate him by destroying them. He will not be slack with one who hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall therefore be careful to do the commandment and the statutes and the rules that I command you today. And because you listen to these rules and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that he swore to your fathers. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of of your ground, your grain and your wine, your oil, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock in the land that he swore to your fathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness And none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you knew, will he inflict on you. But he will lay them on all who hate you. And you shall consume all the people that the Lord your God will give over to you. Your eye shall not pity them. Neither shall you serve their gods, for that would be a snare to you. If You say in your heart, these nations are greater than I. How can I dispose them, depossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. The great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So will the Lord your God do to all the people who, of whom you are afraid. Moreover, the Lord your God will send hornets among them until those who are left and hide themselves from you are destroyed. You shall not be in dread of them, for the Lord your God is in the, your midst, a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will clear away these nations before you by little by little. You may not take, you may not make an end of them at once. Least the beasts, the wild beasts, grow too numerous for you, 
But the Lord your God will give them over to you and throw them into a great confusion until they are destroyed. And he will give their kings into your hand, and you shall make their name perish from under heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. The carved images of their gods shall burn with fire. You shall not covet the silver or the gold that is on them or take it for yourselves, lest you be ensnared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. And you shall not bring an abominable thing into your house and become devoted to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest and abhor it, for it is devoted to destruction. Deuteronomy 7. Chosen people. We are chosen. I am chosen. You are chosen. But, of course, the Bible says that Many are chosen, few are called. You know, that road, the path is narrow. You know, we're all chosen to be God's children. But not everyone take that path. Takes that path. You know, it's interesting over the years dealing with people. Again, it's encouraging, it's lifting them up, it's helping them, motivating to be better workers, to be better people, to get through life. But it's interesting how there are so many out there that are about them and will throw anyone under the bus by any means possible to get to whatever will make them better. See, again, we're in this together and it's taking everyone up together, to be successful together. It's not me. It's not I. It's not you. It's us. It's we. Them. You know, we are doing this together. We're making these steps forward to be the best that we can be. Being better today than we were yesterday. Do I fail? Yes. Many, many times, over and over and over. Am I perfect? Am I ever going to be perfect? Never. But I'm going to be the best that I can be, or at least try to be. Many can deal with me. Many are unable to. Can I come on too strong at times? Probably. Most possibly. But I care. I care about people. I care about the station that I work with, that I work for. I want it to be the best that it can be. I want us to be the best that we can be. So we can be successful. So we can... Do what it is that we need to be doing to, to, to focus on the things that can help us improve for us, for our families. To be better for us, to be better for our families. Spiritually, financially, and physically. Always being there for them. Not going anywhere. but loving them. Inspiring them, motivating them, encouraging them, helping them to also be the best that they can be. Deuteronomy 7. As I always say, read that. What does it say to you? How does it speak to you? How can you take pieces in there to apply to your life to be better? A lot of times it's that stepping out of faith when you are not believing in yourself because you're thinking there's no way I can do this. But it's trying. You know, success never comes by those who do not try. I read that. I can't remember who said it.
Horse Yoda, he said, you know, there is no try. Here's do. <laughs> or it is do. There is no try. I don't know. Faith. Faith without works is death, the Bible says. So it's those actions. Otherwise, you're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything. You're a sheep. You're just doing what it is that you're told. And sometimes, depending on what it is that we do, again, we all have our different levels of what we can do. There are those who who work in different areas. Not everybody's meant to be a, a supervisor or a manager. They don't have the temperance to do that. They don't have the personality to do that. They're not able to, you know, really pull people together to do things like that. To encourage and inspire and motivate. And that's really what being a manager or supervisor is. It's helping someone to be better. But they also have to be willing and want to grow. That if they're not willing, sometimes it's like trying to lead a horse to water, they say. Till he's thirsty, he's not going to go. And maybe I'm getting that wrong. I don't know. But you ever try to move a horse when he doesn't want to move? Just saying. <laughs> Think about it. Deuteronomy 7. How does it help you today? How does it speak to you? If you enjoyed this, thank you so much for listening. But you can share it on social media, both Facebook and Twitter. You can find me there at my buddy Jimmy. And on YouTube at my buddy Jimmy 101 Deuteronomy 7. Read that for you today. How does it help you? Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. Have a great day. God bless. The Jimmy Olsen Radio Network.